Okay, we're rolling. Uh, All right. There's the sound thing. Cool. Uh, Henry James from Robert John the Wreck and King Tree and the Earth Mothers. Yes. Thank you for joining me on the latest episode of uh, Pedal Apocalypse. Thank you so much for having me, man. Cool. It's a pleasure to catch up with you. We and don't get to chat that often. Yeah. It's often. And you're it's local. Uh, yes. Relatively, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> local we're, enough. <laughs> we're in Riverside, California, which is our studio here, yeah. or Bo Grigri's studio. Right. And uh, you're all from Huntington Beach. So I am, yep. Both Southern yep. California. Yep. Well, I'm an, uh, obviously an immigrant. Uh, <laughs> born and raised here? Or? Yes, um, I grew up in uh, Huntington Beach, more or less, um, basically since I was probably three or four years old and went to school, elementary, middle, high school there. Um, went to college briefly at uh, uh, Fullerton Junior College and then, and then went to OCC for a little bit. And then, um, yeah, just started kind of cutting my teeth in the local Orange County music scene, basically, which is sort of where I met, you know, I, for, I formed all my bands there, um, formed King Tree with uh, friends from high school initially. Um, and then, uh, and then yeah, met the guys from Robert John the Wreck um, not long after that, just playing, you know, rubbing elbows, playing in the same same parts of the scene, same clubs and things like that. And Cool. Well, I, I so I don't know if you know the story, but um, Robert John uh, or Robert Andrew asked me to be in Robert John on the Wreck for oh, yeah. a tour. Oh, yeah. And then they were like, actually, don't worry about it. We, got, <laughs> we found Henry. And I'm like, okay, cool. Because I, I, I looked at the set list and I'm like, I don't have time to, to learn all these songs. So they, 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 thankfully they said, don't worry, we found someone. So, uh, um, so yeah. I did uh, not know that. Yeah. That's, that's an interesting <laughs> bit of insight. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I think it was um, just after Chris left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, uh, the, yeah. Between, and they had a bunch yeah. of tours. Yeah, uh, booked so um, yeah, and I I wasn't available that available, right. but I was like I can I can fit that one tour in, right? And then, uh, yeah, they found you. It worked out. It worked out yeah, splendidly. <laughs> um, cool. So how did you how did you get into playing guitar and, and particularly the kind of the style of guitar that you play? So I um, when I was maybe uh, this is gonna this is gonna tell people how old I am or how young I am. Um, I was in elementary school when um, Green Day's American Idiot came out. And that, like, there was something about that and just being, like, kind of like an angry kid and, like, the aggression and, and Billy Joe Armstrong's, like, whole thing on stage that just resonated with me at that time in my life. And I and uh, I, I still do love me some Green Day. Um, Dookie's probably my favorite album, but, like, Basically, through that, I kind of got this real fascination with just the whole concept of like, oh man, being in a band is so cool and playing on stage is so cool and guitars are so cool. So I, I just wouldn't shut up about it. And then finally, my parents got me a, a little acoustic guitar not long after that. And it just it just didn't initially connect for me. Like, like the spirit was there, but the coordination was not quite fully developed yet. And so a couple of years later... Um, I'm hanging out with my dad and, and we were driving around somewhere and I was probably 12 here and he plays um, Eruption by Van Halen. And that was just like, just set off a huge explosion in my brain. I have not been the same ever since. Thanks dad um, <laughs> for, uh, for showing me that. And then that just set off a whole chain of events basically where I'm just like, I gotta get more of this stuff. Where, who, who else? does this so so then you got you know led zeppelin and Jimi hendrix and all that all the great classic rock stuff and and that was at such a perfect time because it was right as i was kind of going through middle school and and that's just such an awkward time and middle school and high school is so awkward and so so that was like my thing and and um i got connected with a great guitar teacher by the name of john sawson who is uh, currently touring with Toad the Wet Sprocket and then he also plays with Casey Musgraves as well so he's another phenomenal guy and he he basically just gave me this momentum and gave me stuff to work on and and I basically knew from the time I was probably 13 or 14 like I want to do this like this I've never felt this way about anything in my life before and I know that this is what I have to do and I am willing to you know practice however much I need to and play all the time and and I was just obsessed and um and so yeah, then then I got into a music program in high school, and I was kind of just sort of. That's that's basically the rest is history. <laughs> cool. um, and now, see, so you you tour a tremendous amount with Robert John. Yes. Um, and you have tours coming up with King Tree. I do. Yeah. Yes, we have our our finally have our first tour 
uh, in mainland Europe. We're going to be touring in support of our new album, Modern Tense, which is out everywhere right now. You can listen to it at, on all your favorite digital services, whatever that may be. And people are probably more familiar with you uh, for the Robert John yes. stuff. Yes, yes, so absolutely. King Tree preempted Robert John. You, were, it you did. had that band. It did. Uh, we've, been, we've been sort of playing around with that project. It was kind of this like informal improvisational jam trio when we were in high school and we did a few random pickup shows where we just it was just three of us it was me and my buddy adam and my buddy um, aaron who lives in new york now and we would just show up to these places and and be like hey we're gonna play for 40 minutes or whatever and we would just jam and play like a blues jam or just like a random riff jam and so some of the first songs we played kind of evolved out of that and i started kind of messing around with with sort of solo recording just like making demos at home and things like that um and then a couple years went by and and we sort of started kind of developing the live version of it more and more um and and meanwhile we were playing in all sorts of other different bands uh myself and, and my bass player adam did and uh then kind of like around the same time we started sort of trying to be more active with that that was right when um i joined robert john of the wreck and so that started taking up more of my resources um and which was great um I, i'm very thankful for it and i got to you know i'm still getting to do a bunch of stuff with them which is awesome um and getting to do both bands is great and i'm very grateful that i have the facility and, and energy to to do both um, and then, yeah, then I joined Robert John on the Wreck, and um, then sort of the pandemic happened. And I think if, if it weren't for that, I wouldn't have had time to really focus on my own stuff. And that gave me kind of the necessary downtime. Um, I put out sort of a, a debut EP, more or less, of just kind of this collection of recordings I'd been working on over the years, um, self-titled um, and then Adam and I kind of connected with a drummer named Derek Eglett, um, and we just felt this immediate explosive chemistry, and it sort of renewed my kind of vigor for like, all right, I have to like keep this project alive, and we have to make an album together, and now we have uh, Modern Tense, which is out now. Cool. And go back to Robert John yeah. and the pandemic, mm -hmm. because um, we were in a, a similar boat, I think, to you at that time. We right. had tours booked. We um, had albums recorded. Yes. You didn't know when the tours would happen, mm -hmm. when you could release albums. Nope. But I remember you, uh, Robert John the Red, yeah. finding this pocket yeah. of able to do a full yeah. European tour right in the middle of the pandemic. Right. And, and we, at that same time, we had to cancel our tour right. because we lost like key festivals, right. which were the links the anchor to, dates, yeah, yeah. to make it work. Yeah. Whereas I was watching your tour, I'm like, oh my God, they've made it to Spain. Oh yeah. my God, they made it yeah. to England. They yeah, made yeah, it, yeah. You know. yeah. How did that, how did, how, how did that feel? How so, did that come about? So it was kind of crazy, right? Because, because we had had this massive, massive tour booked for the spring of 2020 and it was it was turning into this like 50 date tour and so obviously that that was one of the first things to get canceled but our booking agent Manny kept kind of you know like okay what if we did a smaller tour at some point and so so we took some of the dates from that initial big tour and kind of consolidated them into a smaller tour and that got rescheduled i think two or three more times before finally in august september early October of 2021, we finally were like, all right, can we, can we do it? Can we do it? And then it didn't get canceled. So we were like, all right, we're going to do it. So we did um, like the hundred club in London was a big gig on that one. Um, a really, really great gig in, in Paris. And, and obviously being the first band back over there, there's a huge demand for it. Basically. I think it, at that time it was basically us and like Blackstone Cherry mm -hmm. that were touring. So we were kind of, kind of, guinea pigs basically for the overseas thing which is which is kind of cool it kind of was lost on me at the time um and then we were just like wow i can't believe we're doing it it, it felt surreal mm -hmm. um and there was obviously some degree of anxiety because like at that point in time um they were still really uh like like strict about the testing thing so we got tested probably seven times on that tour mm -hmm. in like six weeks and thankfully nobody tested uh, positive um we went all through did a whole like 
12 date tour in England, did a whole slew of dates in Germany and the Netherlands and uh, France, um, Belgium. Yeah. So, and it, and it sort of couldn't have gone really much better. I mean, it really just was, and it was just so surreal and awesome to just get back over there and, and do it. Yeah. Um, no. Cause that's a huge market for us, obviously. Absolutely. And I think it was, um, yeah, just, uh, just at the right time in summer, just yeah. in the right time yeah. when, um, borders were being opened up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They must've been opened up kind of when you were out there. Yeah. There was, like yeah, there was some stuff. Yeah. It really kind of got opened up. Yeah. Pretty much right then. I mean, it was, it was just like, all right, we'll see what happens. We're going to just roll the dice and, you yeah. know, we can't really, you know, like, 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 uh, you know, we don't really have anything to lose on this basically because it's like, this is our lifeblood. So like, whatever, we're just going to have to take the gamble and whatever happens, happens and just yeah. trust the gods of rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Anyway, so back to Pedal Apocalypse. Yes, the show. of course. Um, basically, which three pedals would you take with you into the Pedal Apocalypse, which, I mean, we were close to <laughs> right. yeah, being yeah, yeah. in before and, well, I guess we were in Apocalypse. Yeah. Um, what would you break it down to? What what would be your three key pedals? So let's go with number one. Where, where I I would probably have to say, and this is tough for me, but I but I think I would have to go. I I got turned on to the Klon a while ago, and uh, we did a little Pepsi challenge. Um, my bass player actually owns an actual Klon. Oh wow! Um, and we did we did a Pepsi challenge. I said, turn around. I'm gonna play pedal one and pedal two, and he was like, I couldn't tell you what the difference is so big shout out to wampler um i know a lot of people make clon clones and i'm sure they all sound amazing but this one um definitely has a special thing so i definitely gotta say the wampler tumness is probably my first choice on that list cool um it's just you know can't go wrong um and, and how so that's do a great you, how, sound. Yeah, how do you use that in conjunction with your so setup? So I've used it a couple different ways over the years. Um, it used to be my go-to clean boost. Um, and then I kind of, I just, I love that you can get so many different sounds out of it. And, and it has this amp-like thing to it as well. So so right now, um, and, I, and I'm still kind of workshopping how I'm going to make this work in the future. Um, I'm finally getting into loop switchers. But basically right now, I pretty much have an either or relationship between the Wampler Tumnus and the Wampler Plexi Drive, because um, I love the sound of Marshalls and um, I just, I heard all these demos that sounded great. So I basically kind of like, based on the feel of whatever the situation is, it's kind of a song by song thing and, and um, I'll just kind of rotate between the two. So it's sort of an always on, I always have one overdrive pedal going at all times. Um, I generally run my amps clean like like teetering on the edge of starting to develop some static so that the you know the tubes are are working a little bit but also so that I have headroom uh because of the the way we play actually in both bands um I I prefer to have a noticeable volume boost on right. stage during during solos or important lead parts or any point in which the vocal drops out so these are kind of my two sort of foundation overdrives but I think if I was going into the pedalocalypse Pedal pedal apocalypse. Pedal apocalypse. Pedal apocalypse. <laughs> I would have to go with with the Wampler Tumnus cool. as my first choice. Well, let's hear a bit of that. As, sure. As you use it. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> uh, here, let's turn this off for now. <laughs> So can we hear it without it on actually? So yeah, yeah, yeah. sure, sure, of, sure. Of course, of yeah. So, there, so yeah. this is my clean tone. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Very clean. Yeah, it's just, it's just enough so that you start kind of hearing, if you really dig in, a little yeah. bit of static. So there's that richness, there's a touch of com natural compression in there. And then I kind of 
I set this set this up more or less to unity, so it kind of there's not a huge volume increase, yeah. and it's more. I think it's more the perception of there being gain that makes it feel like it's louder. But I think it's not too much louder. Nice and yeah, it's very playable, very um, nice, full range rhythm. Yeah, sound. it's great. So when it comes to uh, to doing a lead solo, sure. What, what, how do you boost that then? I have um, the limited edition <laughs> <laughs> JHS solo boost actually. Oh, okay. And um, and it's got two modes on it, sort of basically. So. <laughs> That's one mode, that's the uh, FET, which kind of is a bit more aggressive. Hmm. And I tend to just prefer that. This is the op amp, which is a bit more transparent. I think it's just kind of more of like. <laughs> just a little bit more teeth to it and I find that it it um, kind of just gives it a natural cut in a full band setting um, it just gives it a little bit more aggression cool so but that's not gonna be one of your pedal choices I probably would say no yeah. because well I have a lot of pedals here obviously <laughs> yeah and, you got and, enough to choose from and so. I think the Wampler Tumnus is it's it's uh, versatile enough right to where if I was put in a situation, I could kind of use it for sort of whatever my needs are, basically. Yeah. And and it, does the solo, the JHS solo, does that run before the? I have it after, uh, after so that okay. it so that it you know because because uh, and I and I'm still experimenting with all this stuff, but I have it. I I basically have. I guess we're just gonna dive into this right now. I basically have two boards here, right now, because um, I didn't want to buy one big one. I wanted to keep using this pedal train I've had for years. Um, you know, reuse and, and repurpose. And so this is kind of the last link in the chain here. And and I have it set up that way so that specifically it's, it's after the overdrive. So instead of shooting more gain into the overdrive, it's taking the sound from the overdrive and boosting it. Because mm -hmm. um, I, cause I like, this is such a good sound on its own that I don't, I don't want to kind of mess with that i kind of want to just take that and just make it bigger right sweet well cool so that's pedal number one yes. so pedal number two what would you go for i would probably have to go with this alter ego by tc electronic um i i use it for multiple things um and i just i just kind of incorporated it into the setup so i'll kind of show you a bit of of what I what I use it for basically and, and so It, it has that functionality with the expression pedal where um, a lot of these kind of multi-delay things do, but you basically can sort of ramp through two presets. And I love what it does as you're sort of, I guess, going into different things. There's a lot of versatility to it, and I'm still kind of figuring out the functionality for it. But uh, but it's that. But it also works as a looper, um, and I and I use that uh, when I do I do some solo acoustic gigs. Um, to, to kind of keep myself afloat when we're not touring. Um, so I'll use it as a looper um, and, and just kind of play, you know, songs that, that are a couple chords that you can just kind of loop the same thing and, and um, play over over that. So it, cool. it has numerous functions that I love about it. So the concept being if we were in a pedal apocalypse and everyone had... <laughs> 
perished in, right. the, in, in this uh, said pedal apocalypse, you could carry on on your own. I could. This pedal. <laughs> <laughs> I w- it wouldn't be as fun, but I could. <laughs> yes. Cool. So it's um, it's like a reverb delay. Or it's a delay. It has delay, right. it has quite a few different um, presets on it, and when you have it in the delay mode, you can scroll through some different things. So I think I think this is like a. This is kind of like a echo plex. This is my my go-to preset. It's a it's supposed to be like a space echo. Yeah, just with the expression pedal, I mean, you can just do... And then there's another preset on here, I think it's supposed to be like a... to be like a Benson Echo Rec kind of thing. So, nice. so yeah, there's, there's, I mean, it's just endless, you know, yeah. endless fun. Uh, and is that something you use more with King Tree? More with guess? King Tree, right. yeah. There's, there's a, there's a, you know, the trio element, obviously. So like, let's say we're in the middle of a song, and and I go, oh crap, my guitar is like wildly out of tune. So I just can kind of go. <laughs> uh, but it also, but it also works great. For like medleys and things like that, right? Like if we're just trying to kind of roll through some tunes and and um, really kind of lends itself to the psychedelic rock thing as well, and and it's just it's just fun to mess with. We like to jam over different things. There's quite a few songs where we'll just we'll just kind of sit in a groove for a while and and really fully improvise, and and it's it's uh, super fun with that sort of thing um, to just make crazy echo trails and things like that. Cool. Um, um, before we move on to pedal three, sure. so when you're touring um, with, you know, well, because you've extensively toured with Robert John and the Rex. Yes. Um, h- how do you, and doing that many shows back to back, I mm-hmm. mean, sometimes you must do weeks of shows back to back without breaks. How do you keep yourself kind of, not interested, but, you know, keep things fresh every night? Do you... Do you try different pedal things? Do you try different solos, or do you like to kind of lock things in and know that every night you're gonna, you have that down? And that's a really good question. Um, it it really really just depends on the song, um, and certain certain songs um, I might even kind of flip flop back and forth. I might feel like kind of ad libbing the solo a little bit, um, or another night I'll go, you know, what? I just want to play the one from the record and. I'll kind of add little licks in between riffs and things like that. And and that band, you've seen this before. There's there's a there's a bit of a jam band aspect to it as well. So so there is a a way of keeping things kind of fresh and sometimes I'll just kind of be like, you know, what? I'm just going to play something weird tonight and you guys have to react to it. <laughs> On stage in the moment and uh or or like Andrew the drummer will will do something cuz we kind of talk about this a lot we're like how do we keep ourselves from getting bored because when we're doing a tour we're kind of strapped into the same roughly 20 songs or so um and and that 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 gets a little bit stale uh pretty quickly so we have to kind of find different ways to sort of make it interesting yeah i'll try i'll try different combinations i'll go let's try a fuzzy solo this time or let's do you know uh Let's add an auto wah That's section cool. to it. Right. Yeah. What's that pedal? That is the Walrus Audio Kangra, and it's it's great because it does two things. It does that, the uh, envelope filter, which is really really great. Um, I really really love it a lot. It's very cool. Hold on. <laughs> Uh, and then it also has uh, like an Octavia circuit basically and um, it's great for the you know 
but what I really love to use it for is instant doom metal yeah super super fun so it tracks pretty well it tracks really well yeah, yeah it's great it's a uh, it's uh yeah it's i mean i mean you can hear that too you know hendrix kind of doing sort of that kind of stuff in like the band of gypsies and mm -hmm. things like that where he's playing you know kind of like but really it it's those lower notes i mean you can hear that low octave clearly defined there yeah but i'm not playing it at all it's not on the so sometimes right. people will hear me playing it like are you down tuned i'm like no i'm in standard like i just great for that it, it just totally like it's great for like a, a super intense chorus i have a couple songs like that um with king tree and robert john of the wreck that if you really need to take it up to the next level and have some really devastating sounding power chords um it it does the trick and you can do that fun octavia thing and then with them both combined it's it's really really fun <laughs> It's super wacky nice super super fun I've never heard of that pedal it's a great great it. pedal yeah, awesome. i love it i love it it's a staple okay so pedal number three your pedal number three one. i have to pick one that's the problem here i have to pick one of these and that's that's a really tough one to go i'd probably go with the kangaroo honestly yeah. if i had to pick a third one yeah because it because it you know it does the job as far as the fuzz stuff um I'm tempted to say this silk tone fuzz because I'm a I'm a huge huge Hendrix nerd or the Univibe as well and you know you got to have the Univibe or the fuzz if you're going to do Hendrix but I think for the sake of versatility you know this just you can do all kinds of stuff with this and and um, you can even run it with an expression pedal if you want which I've never done before mm -hmm. but apparently you can you could potentially use it as a uh, um, a wah pedal uh, on its own but uh, but it just it you know, it gets kind of the... Does your, does your fuzz, you know, you can get some great fuzz tones out of it and then having the Ottawa obviously is yeah. really, really great. So I probably, that's probably going to be number three for me. Cool. Fantastic. Well, we've heard them all. Yep. Um, <laughs> would you ever use all three at the same time? Yeah, why not? <laughs> let's, try yeah, let's do it. So I have the wrong pedal on here. Let's do this. Why not? Let's let's see what happens. Cool. <laughs>